Hello and welcome to Edgeless Rock, a channel for megalithic fans with megalithic lands. Today, we are going to one of Indonesia's islands called Sumba Island. It is an amazing island full of megalithic monuments. Indonesia is the largest archipelago country in the world. The megalithic mysteries here are grossly underrated. For this video, I will bring you to Southeast Indonesia. Tenggara means Southeast. Nusa typically means homeland. So you can say Nusa Tenggara means homeland of the Southeast people. This southern province has an island full of megalithic wonders. The island we are going to discover is called Sumba Island. This little island is also home to approximately 1,000 megalithic monuments which are called tombs. Let's go to Pragoli Cultural Village, our first destination. Pragoli is the name of the original tribe. Their ancestors are the original inhabitants who still believe in animism. Amazingly, their traditions and beliefs have not been contaminated by modernization. Praigoli villagers believe that these megalis were dragged from the east. This contradicts what I first assumed that the villagers carved them. This photo shows that villagers used them as tombs, but they didn't say they carved them. They merely carried them from point A to point B. This recycled tombstone has a statue of a naked, belly-hugging humanoid, just like those in Easter Island and around the world. According to a villager, he believes that these megalithic tombs are heritage from his ancestors. The villagers keep the culture alive to symbolize self-worthiness and self-respect. Our next stop is Ratengaro Cultural Village. In the local language, Rate means grave and Garo is the original tribe who lived here. Garo tribe lost in a tribal war and the dead warriors were buried here. Ratengaro Cultural Village is basically a village of Garo graves. It has 304 megalithic tombs. Tombs at Ratengaro is believed to be 4,500 years old. If that is true, it will mean Garo people of Sumba were carving megaliths the same time as Egyptians building pyramids of Giza. While mainstream is quick to say Sumbis are great and hardworking people, I think that event didn't happen at all. At Ratengaro, you can see huge rectangular structures which we are told they are tombs. But the locals say they are monuments. Not all are tombs. The locals refer them as Tugu, which means monument. There are four monuments venerated as sacred. One is to mark the territory. One is to mark victory. One is said to have power of lightning and one is said to bring rain. Such unscientific local knowledge might be a clue as to what happened here. Our next stop is a famous tourist destination called Prai Ijing. Prai means village in local dialect and Ijing is Ambarela fruit. Needless to say, this area is full of Ambarela trees. Prai Ijing village has so many megalithic structures, it feels like they are everywhere. Don't be mistaken by the table-shaped tombs. The flat top is the megalith. The bottom may or may not be a megalith. The locals move the rectangular flat top but never say they chisel them out of bedrock. This tradition of moving megatan block is still kept alive in Galubako village. These are not mysterious ancient blocks. They are modern machine cut but transported the old-fashioned way from the quarry. 
This is manageable given enough manpower and time. Some megaliths took two years to cut, shape and dress to specific details. They were loaded on a truck and moved to a certain location before they were dragged to the final location. Some megaliths took hundreds of men and about three months to drag. Whether it is modern or ancient, mysterious or plain simple tradition, an early misty morning will definitely give you a sense of mysticism is in the air. Let's move on to Tarong village. From this photo, you can see 11 machine cut rectangular stones placed on top of stone boxes. I can't tell you if they are modern or ancient. The stone box is still being used as burial for the dead while keeping the culture alive. Sumbis in Tarong village is among the many villagers that uses megalithic stone box as tombs. After you bury the dead, you can use the tomb as tables. It is a very odd culture where you have utmost respect for the dead but yet tomb as table is fine. With modern machine cut tombs in the midst, it is now harder to tell which are the true ancient megalithic tombs. Anakalang is a district with the highest concentration of megaliths in Sumba, but not all are ancient from the unknown builders. Pasunga cultural village in Anakalang has better accessibility and is therefore better promoted. Villages here are used to tourists. The famous king and queen of Anakalang slab has a date stamp 1926 and it took six months to make. The inserted photo has a slab made in the 70s, but the naked belly hugging humanoid is most likely an original ancient piece, just like those around the world. It is a topic for another day. Although you need forensic archaeology to differentiate modern and original ancient blocks, some are pretty obvious. There are many flat megalithic top pieces used as cover for modern tomb boxes. Something happened in the past and megaliths were left behind. Just like this megalith in Watumbaka, human nature tends to see them as tombs and therefore use them as tombs. This practice became a tradition and together with their architecture, it became a culture. When you step into Prayawang cultural village, you will feel like you step into the past as if you came out of a time machine. Everything here feels so primitive and disconnected to modern civilization. Megalithic monuments greet you immediately after you enter the village. There are about 15 megalithic tombs at the center of Prayawang cultural village. But I cannot tell which one is original ancient tomb and which is not, but the photo on the right is obvious. Apparently, the ritual for burying this dead person requires climbing to the top of the tomb. But the stone block looks pretty new and was cut by machine recently as compared to some which look more like original and ancient. In July 2022, the latest addition to the megalithic tomb is a 6 meter long by 2.7 meters wide mega block. At 1.5 meters thick, this limestone is about 60 tons. This modern installation is making the tradition less attractive and tourists will not be able to discern which is ancient and which is modern. Prai Liu in Wain Gapu has many megalithic tombs. With the help of trucks and modern machines and growth in population, big tombs are more and more likely to be added to their collection. In my opinion, the truly ancient and original tombs are in odd and isolated places. They have the authentic feel that tells you it is very ancient. 
It is these original megalithic monuments that locals believe it is a tomb and used them as tombs and decided to carry on the tradition. They have strange motifs and strange humanoid figures just like those around the world. They were there when Sumbis were still using stone tools. That already proves they didn't do it. The original ancient blocks are distinctly unique and they are still hard to reach. Random flattened surfaces for no reason as if it was once a quarry is a clue that leads to ancient advanced megalithic builders. Until today, no one can explain how these megaliths which we call tombs ended up here. If these are tombs of important people, the locals will know that the tombs belong to someone they are familiar with. A flat top on four legs over a so-called tomb shows the original unknown ancient builders had other plans. In Sumba, Rati means grave. In Toraja, Ranti means grave. In Guam Island, Leti should mean grave or related to the dead. Based on etymology, we should have an idea that this megalith has to do with the spiritual realm as it is considered sacred. Sumba has tombs that look like a T-pillar concept to me. It is the same concept you can see at Gobekli Tepe in Turkey. There are plenty of similar concept megaliths you can find in Minoka in Spain. These mysterious ancient megalithic builders left the same thing for us to keep as tradition. I am sure by now you notice the unique shape of the house. It is called Uma in Sumba. In Malay, it is called Ruma. It has a shape found only in Sumba Island. It has a peak in the middle. This peak house is called Uma Batangu. It is noted by some as the symbol of Yoni and Linga, which originate from Hinduism. Maybe we should study the families living in these houses to see if they are healthier than those who did not. The animistic Sumbis who practice Marupu belief puts great respect for elders. They believe Ina Kalada and Ama Kalada were their ancestral parents who gave birth to Sumbis and were progenitors of the world. Sumba Island is their Garden of Eden. Missionaries came to Sumba as early as late 19th century. Today, Two-thirds of the island is Christian and one-third still hold on to Marupu religion. However, most of the Christians do not forget their Marupu roots and hold fast to their rituals when it comes to festivals and ceremonies. Some churches even retain their Sumbis architecture. Sumba is 15 times bigger than Singapore, but eight times smaller in population. With approximately 800,000 population, nine languages and plenty of rituals, Sumba is definitely a great destination for at least one week of vacation. I have 15 sites pinned to my Google Earth, but there are probably 40 places you can go to. The megalithic sites are all over the island. Today, Sumbis are still very primitive compared to a first world country. Despite being surrounded by sea and experience great deal of rainwater running through countless rivers, their main daily problem is still drinking water. People of Sumba were rather primitive about 100 years ago. You can imagine having enough chisels to hew megaliths out of bedrock is a possible hurdle. So the idea that few thousand years ago, hacking bedrock for megalithic tombs by the hundreds were a popular thing to do is hard to believe. From original unknown megalithic monuments to modern tombs, this object is now an icon of Sumba. 
with two-third population now Christians, some tombs even have Jewish names. Well, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this short presentation on Megalith of Sumba. See you in the next video and have a wonderful day. This is Bernie Ong signing out. Jumpa lagi.